When people ask me who I most enjoyed interviewing, I'm unable to give them an answer. If they ask me who was the most remarkable man I ever met, I answer without hesitation, Muhammad Ali. I interviewed him four times. I lost on every occasion. When they told me I was going to do your show, I was honored. I like people that make me think you, and you're talking, you, you know, this is a brainy man. He's not just an ordinary fellow. You think it's easy, come take his position. You'll find out that I'm a witty person, and it's kind of hard to talk to a man like me. <laughs> you know what I'm there's, there's... Don't point at me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something that... <laughs> See, we cut black folks don't like white folks pointing at me. But it's all right for you to point at me. But they... But why, 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 why do you say that? I mean, do you mean that? Say what? That you black folks don't no, like white folks. No, I'm joking. You're joking. I asked it. <laughs> Sounds like... The champion of the whole world can whoop every man in Russia, every man in America, every man in China, every man in Japan, every man in Europe, every man in America. The champion of the whole world. That sound big then. So I kept working until I did it. <laughs> not only the champion of the whole world, but better than all of those before me. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> You're not as dumb as you look. <laughs> Ali, the boxer, was the greatest of them all. He had the lot, speed, grace, strength, stamina in abundance. He was also brave. He was ring smart. He was the master of psychological warfare. I think that you win a lot of your fights, as well as in the ring, outside the ring as well. You psych people out, don't you, beforehand? Well, this works. It don't really, you don't really psych them out. You really make them fight harder. It don't psych them out. It don't put fear in them. And that's the thing. It makes them fight too hard. It makes them anxious. They got to get you. Like I told George, I said, OK, sucker, I'm backing up in the ropes, and I want you to take your best shots. And I just stood there. Come on, show me something. Show me something, kid. You're not doing nothing. You're just a girl. Look at you. You ain't got nothing. Come on, sucker. Show me something. Show me something, sucker. Round seven. Ali continues to talk. Foreman tries to deliver some shots to the body. And I made him so angry. He just beat himself out. He was so tired, he was swaying and just fall on the ropes. I said, man, this is the wrong place to get tired. <laughs> I said, you are in trouble. Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. The fight with Foreman revealed Ali the psychological warrior. What defined him as a pugilist, a fighter of great speed of limb and thought, an opponent of limitless courage, a true champion, were the three fights with Joe Frazier one of which nearly occurred on a talk show I co-hosted in America with Dick Cabot. The fights with Joe Frazier marked the high point of Ali's boxing career and the beginning of the end. The savage beatings both men took meant that neither would be the same again. But whilst Frazier eventually withdrew, Ali kept on baying at the moon, driven by his pride and the need to support the entourage who fed off his fame. Moreover, his folly was encouraged by admirers who seemed to believe in his invincibility against all the medical evidence. I mean, you've been around the fight game, as you say, 27 years. And just this one last point, and then we'll move on from this. And you've seen what can happen to fighters. You've seen those shambling wrecks that go around. You see them at every boxing occasion. 
And what people are frightened of is they don't want that to happen to you. What? Be a shaman, really? That's right. Yeah. I'm a long way from being a shaman. Oh, I'm not suggesting you are now. I'm saying that's what they're frightened of it might happen. My, my thinking is so superior, and my knowledge is so positive, and my logic is so wise, until it clashes with the mentality, which is down here, and I'm up there. So, by me being so high, I can see more and see farther than you. And you're looking up at me and saying, Ali, don't do it. <laughs> Ali, please stop me when it hurts. And you're on a job making... Six to seventy pounds a week, or whoever this guy is. <laughs> never, never been out of the country, not known in his own neighborhood. Ali, don't do it. But I'm at such a high level until I don't think like you. I'm not like you. I know I say you, I mean the other person. But I'm, you, but you, but, but you know why they say that. I mean, it's for the because best possible reasons. Though. They are fear and they are wary. It looks looks dangerous to them. That's but right. It's not really that dangerous to me. Yeah. And it's, it's the just another day. And, and it's I, the affection they have for you. They've never felt about another boxer like they felt about you. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> Sadly, our last meeting was to prove prophetic. A simple medical test where he had to place a finger on the end of his nose proved difficult. He went on to fight once more after that, and those of us who loved and admired him closed our eyes. When we opened them, we saw a bloated caricature of the glorious athlete we once knew. <laughs> to meet him was to be aware of a remarkable, unusual presence, not altogether accounted for by size or reputation. He was just different from the rest of us. His is an amazing story of a singular man who touched all our lives as only great entertainers can. <laughs>